All right, now I'm going to show you some video clips where Martin Richling actually is teaching works salvation. And not only that, but you have to die in a state of grace. Now, he doesn't come right out and say it that way, but he says that you have to keep your salvation. You have to keep, you know, being justified up until the time that you die. He denies eternal security right here. And if you deny eternal security, well, how do you stay saved? By your works. So he makes all this big this big stink about, oh, you know, people that, that say a prayer of salvation, that's works salvation. And he himself is teaching works salvation. Let's watch a video clip here. He's, he's, he's not even going to explain it right. But when he, Paul says this gospel by which you are also saved, remember the Corinthians' trouble. It wasn't believing in Jesus. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1 that their testimony was confirmed by all utterance and all knowledge. He, they said, man, your testimony is confirmed. You're the church of God at Corinth. Their problem was service, fornication, suing each other, messing up the sign gifts, messing up the Lord's Supper, divisions among them, horrible things they were doing in the flesh. So they were not walking from Romans 5 truth forward, but because Paul's gospel is glad tidings of good things, they weren't being dead to sin, dead to the law, and the total victory that Romans 8 gives. So he just said that the Corinthians were saved when Paul confirmed the word, you know, and everything there at the beginning, they're saved, but they're just having problems. They're not walking in that, you know, thing there, the sanctification, or they're not walking in it. Um, isn't walking a work? You say, well, Brian, he's not teaching anything. Let's continue watching. Believed in vain! Yeah, you know what that means? It means exactly that. If you don't keep in memory what Paul preached, your time past belief is in vain. God does not care what you believed in the past. God cares what you believe now. Your salvation is always in the present tense. Being justified freely by His grace. Romans 5.1 then. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being justified is in the present tense. So he says, believed in vain here, that uh, to believe is just in vain. <laughs> Did you get that? Your salvation is always in the present tense. Then it's not finished. Did you get that? This man is teaching works salvation. You know what you do when you go to a Roman Catholic? You say, are you saved? You know what they're supposed to say? It's in the Catechism. They're supposed to say, I am being saved. Why? They have to continue in a state of grace. They have to go to confession. They have to do penance. Why? To merit salvation. This guy's a papist, I'm telling you. He is a Jesuit. I can almost guarantee you. And you say, well, Brian, can you prove it? I cannot prove it in the sense of getting a picture there, you know, with his paper saying, hello, I'm a Jesuit. You can't prove it like that. But the fact of the matter is, what he is preaching is Roman Catholicism. Now, it's veiled, okay? He's trying to look like he's a King James Bible believer, but he starts to come out with stuff like this, and you can see, whoa, wait a second here, this isn't Bible, this is Catholicism. That's what this guy's teaching. And you're going to see later on him saying about you have to die in this good state. That's Catholic. Dying in a state of grace. But let's look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Wherein we stand? Um... And by the way, being justified by faith, is that a continuous event or is that once and done? Um, that's once and done. You don't have to believe by faith that Jesus died for your sins every day to stay saved. That's Catholic. That is works. By definition, that is works. This guy, this nut is teaching works salvation. It's incredible. You must continue. It's always present tense. Incredible. Let's continue watching here.
No, now see, now he's lumping me in with the other heretics who say once saved, always saved. Ooh. Oh, I'm lumping him in with other heretics that say once saved, always saved. Like the Bible teaches. Oh. You reckon old uh, Martin Richling isn't really a Bible-believing Christian after all? Could it be that he's a Catholic? A Papist? Perhaps a Jesuit? <laughs> That's conspiratorial, man. Come on. Uh -huh. There is eternal security for the believer. In the present state, I have eternal security. If I died right now, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I have eternal security. I, I'm sealed until the day of redemption. All the verses on eternal security apply to a believer. But if you do not keep salvation and what Paul preached in your memory, your time past belief is in vain. Do you understand? It is in vain. you got to die like Paul died. I've kept the faith. Paul died a believer. You cast off your faith, believe another gospel, believe in Muhammad, the Pope, God. You're not a believer. So all the verses on eternal security don't apply to you because you're not a believer. They only apply to believers. Oh, you have to die a believer. Die in a state of grace. If you die as a faithful Catholic, well, you might make it if you go through purgatory for a while. Give old Richling here some time, he'll probably be teaching purgatory. If he doesn't already, I know I haven't heard all of his studies, I wouldn't possibly waste my time like that. But you say, well, you have to continue believing up until the time you die. Really? Um, so let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Oh, then he denies your salvation, right? No, keep reading. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Once you are born again, you are a member of the body of Christ. You can't be unborn again. You can't become saved and then lost. When Jesus Christ casts people into hell, he says, Depart from me, ye cursed, I never knew you. He doesn't say, I knew you what one time and then you got lost because you stopped believing and then you got saved again and then you, you stopped believing again. And so you were in and out and in and out and unfortunately you died on, on one of the times when you were out. Huh? No, no. The reality of it is when you get saved, you're in. You're a Christian. And you're going to go home to glory. Now, of course, Richling doesn't understand that because he's not a member of the body of Christ. He is a papist. He's teaching papal doctrines here. Okay? Just incredible. Now I could rebuke him, you know, as a, as a heretic, which he is, but I'm going to let him rebuke himself, actually. Let's watch some more videos here. When man can respond in a work, he's not offended. He's participating in his salvation and deeds. What Jesus did wasn't enough. So I have to then add a work. It's exactly what he believes. You see how twisted this guy is? He comes out and he's attacking people that pray to get saved. And in reality, what he's saying is exactly what he's teaching. Because you have to keep yourself saved. You have to stay saved. It's incredible. Die in a state of grace, you know. You have to die believing. Let's continue. But yet the stupid preachers come along today and give lost people a work to do. That's why so many thousands do it. Because it's not offensive. Do you understand? Your flesh will gobble up any work to do to please God. Man is incurably religious. From the garden, when he sinned, he covered himself with fig leaves. And fig leaves are always having to do something. Fig leaves are a work. It's a perfect illustration of what man man attempts to do to please God. The problem with fig leaves, though, is they dry up, and you got to keep picking more. You see, you got to keep picking more. Kind of like saying that your your salvation is always in the present tense, and you got to keep believing, working your way to heaven. You see, because lost people will do any work 
to please God. That way they can avoid the offense of the cross where God rejects all your works because Jesus Christ did all the work. All right. Jesus Christ did all the work, but you have to stay saved. You have to keep believing. Okay. Um, that doesn't work. All right. Martin Richling is a lost man. And let me just say this in conclusion here. I've made uh, four videos now uh, debunking this ridiculous idiot and uh, lost man. I don't know if I should call him an idiot because an idiot is somebody who is ignorant and oftentimes has no idea they're not capable of understanding more. And I don't think that that's Martin Richling. I believe that the man is a trained Jesuit. Um, I've showed you now documented proof that he is teaching uh, Roman Catholic doctrine. He taught that Peter was without error. He has taught that uh, he is without error, that we should be other Christs in our flesh. Uh, and here in this video, he is teaching that you have to die basically in a state of grace. You have to continue believing. Belief, it's being justified. That's what Catholics teach. A true Catholic, they, they say, if you say, I know I'm going to go to heaven when I die, they say that's the sin of presumption. Okay? That's what's going on. Catholicism is all about adding to what Jesus Christ did. And of course, they don't believe in what Jesus Christ did on the cross, because if they did, they wouldn't have to continually eat him and drink his blood in the Mass. See? Richling is a Catholic. He never got saved. He is teaching even something that most Catholics wouldn't teach, and that is that Jesus Christ is a created being. That is satanic. Even a devout Catholic, most devout Catholics don't even teach that. So this guy is lost. And you say, well, Brian, why are you giving this guy your time? Because I want to use him and his heresies to teach you out there. To teach you that just because somebody says that they believe the King James Bible and they read out of the King James Bible, that doesn't make them saved and that does not make them a real true teacher of the King James Bible. And I'm going to tell you right now, this man is one of the most deceptive I've ever seen. You got a guy like Steven Anderson, you know, he makes a lot of stupid mistakes and says a lot of stupid things that can easily be debunked. And, you know, some of the other guys that I've, you know, attacked uh, and exposed on this channel, um, they make some really stupid mistakes. And sometimes it's because they're a novice, sometimes it's because they're proud and they don't want to be corrected. Um, but, Richling, uh, this guy, there's a spirit there that is very, very evil. Extremely evil. And uh, I have not experienced this level of evil before from a professing King James Bible-believing pastor. Uh, this guy is very, very bad. And that's why I thought I better make a couple videos exposing this guy, showing, you know, listening to this guy. I mean, I'm listening to him and, you know, doing my work and things, you know, around here and trying to fix things up and stuff and while I'm listening to this guy. And it just, just listening to him was making me feel mean and making me feel hateful. And just like, this guy doesn't know the first thing about the love of Christ. Why? He's never been redeemed. And so, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to waste any more time on this guy. I don't care what he's going to bring out against me in the future or whatever else. In fact, I'm probably going to ban him from my channel. I'm going to give him time to respond to these videos, you know. But I'm getting sick and tired of his, his silly little followers coming on here and putting links to his videos and stuff. My video, My channel is not here to promote Martin Richling, okay? I'm making these videos to debunk a very seriously evil man. And, but I, I have so many other projects to do, you know, I'm going to get back to preaching the Word. You know, I know a lot of you have been like, don't even answer him, Brian, you know, and I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to make a couple videos showing the very serious nature of this guy and showing you, you know, some of you called me paranoid and stuff because I said I believe he's a Jesuit. Well, I still believe he's a Jesuit. I've been showing you doctrines that the guy is teaching that are from straight out of the Catholic Catechism. And I would, if I had my catechisms right now, they're, they're boxed away yet. If I had them right now, I would show you.
Okay, watch some of my old, older videos. I did show these, you know, sections of the Catechism where they are teaching papal infallibility, and where they are teaching you need to die in a state of grace and things like that. You can look that stuff up on your own too. But uh, just wanted to make this final video. I'm not going to make anything more on Martin Richling, um, just because I can't stomach listening to the guy for very long. He's just he is vile. He's a very very vile individual, and uh, I got work to do. You know, work to do for the Lord. But I just wanted to put this thing together to warn you out there. Um, this guy's a wicked man, very very wicked. So, uh, I think a guy like this, you know, you say, well, we should pray for his salvation. Well, it'd be nice to see the guy that gets saved and things like that. But, brethren, you've got to realize that there are some people, too, that have crossed the line. And they're not ignorant. And they're actually studying the truth so that they can attack the truth and twist it. And Martin Richling is one of those. It's not just ignorance to come out and say that Jesus Christ was a created being. Uh, that's very serious. That is blasphemy. That's extremely serious. And uh, I don't have much time for somebody like that, to be very honest with you. Uh, would I like to see the guy get saved? Yeah, I would, but uh, he'd have to get rid of his whole ministry. And I don't think the guy is going to do that because he's also extremely prideful. And uh, so, and then about, you know, oh, he has to submit to you, Brian Denlinger. No, 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 that isn't it. He has to submit to the book, you know. But and and you know, I'll say one other thing too here before I close. You know, you say, well, I still don't think he's a Catholic. Okay, uh, who did Catholics burn back in the Dark Ages? They burned up uh, heretics. And what did they do? They went out hunting for heretics. Uh, the only reason I've ever attacked different men that are King James only and whatever else is because a lot of the brethren have tried to, you know, have contacted me, God, you got to answer this guy, you got to answer this guy. I attacked Stephen Anderson, I've attacked Mike Hoggard. Um, Stephen Anderson, I don't believe is saved. Mike Hoggard, I'm iffy on that guy. I think that he's got some major pride issues and doesn't want to be corrected. Uh, do I think he's lost? Well, I don't know about him. He said some very serious things and I'm going, oh boy, I don't know about him. Um, but Anderson, I question his salvation because he hates the Jews so much and because he's off in so many other areas. But uh, this guy, Martin Richling, you can see plainly that this man is not saved. And you know, if you are saved, you can, you can tell just listening to the guy. It doesn't take you more than about five minutes to listen to the guy and you can just feel that the spirit is different in him. So, that's all I'm going to say about Martin Richling. I'm not going to waste any more of my time on the guy. I'm um, going to be bringing out a lot of other studies here coming up. Um, we both, uh, my wife and I, have been working on research uh, for a lot of very interesting things. We're both working on some more things that we're going to come out with. And uh, So, that will be it for my studies on Martin Richling. Um, if he continues with his foolishness, I'm just going to have to ban him from the channel. Just as simple as that. A uh, man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Okay? I'm not going to make a list of heretics to be burned at the stake or something like Richling does. No, I'm just going to say, oh, he's a heretic. And that's it. So, that will be it for this video. Thank you for watching.